It's time for the MCTS Experience with Mr. Orr and Mr. Nash. Discover your passion and unlock your future. We are here and ready to go. Mr. Nash, big episode. Excellent. Super excited. Super pumped. Yeah! Woo! Somebody stop us. Here we go. <laughs> um, this is the May episode. Spring has sprung. Uh, the kids Be- are out there. Beautiful outside. Learning, building things, mm-hmm. moving forward. Graduation is mm-hmm. coming up. The end of the school year is in sight, and summer is right around the corner. A mm-hmm. um, couple quick announcements before we get underway. We've got uh, uh, some orientations coming up. The HSA Orientation Health Science Academy for incoming freshmen is May 30th. Um, how about picnics? We're excited that uh, all MCTS family picnics, meaning all students in the district, that we have a real fun uh, interactive experience on June 14th. And uh, we're going to have food and we're going to have games. And I know there's a pi- there's pickup basketball games that you do, Mr. Orr. There and, is. And so producer Nick is a, a, a wily veteran on the basketball court. He's, he's phenomenal. He's good. He's, he's solid. He's got a nice outside shot, but he's mm. also inside moves, too. He's a little bit of a Joel Embiid. I like that. I'll be yeah. running the Quay Pit. Uh, so we do Quates here. It's Mercer County. Everybody who's outside of Mercer County listening is, uh, what's Quates? It's an English game. Round yeah. horseshoes. It's round horseshoes, and, and it's awesome. So it's a great way for the students to end their year. At the same time, do something social with us as the staff and the administration. And it's it's a it's a legacy uh, experience here at MCTS. I did it when I when I went to school here 30 years ago. I remember our they picnic. picnic yeah, absolutely. And the food's great, and yeah, it really is a nice. Everybody looks forward to it. We, we get a magician. Maybe, yes. a, maybe a dunk tank. You never know. Fingers crossed on the dunk tank. Okay. I hope so. Okay. I hope so. Um, and that is that is uh, both campuses, uh, Aspen Pig and Saipac. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, what else? Let's see. Rutgers testing. So on June 6th, every year, HSA students uh, do better and better and earn college credits through uh, Rutgers University Dynamics in Health, uh, Anatomy and Physiology, and Medical Terminology. That sounds pretty intense, Orf. It's pretty intense. They're, they're pretty smart students over there. Oh, Good hey, times. Hard work. HSA kills it and does a great job. I- I'm super excited to share that on June 6th, Eighth, which is a Saturday. Yes, we're going to be doing one of our drive one events. I love these. I've been to these. Uh, it's it. First of all, if you're listening, free breakfast. You know, continental breakfast, cinnamon buns, etc. Free. Yeah. We got a free lunch, hamburgers, hot dogs, all that cooked by the culinary kids. Yes. So it's all good. But here's the cool part: all you do is show up, pick out a 2020 or a 2019 Ford Motor product. You you drive around the block, all right turns, all safe, licensed drivers, and when you come back, that earns the school twenty dollars. You don't pay for the twenty dollars. You just do it. Somebody test drives a car. We get twenty bucks. End of story. Totally true. That's absolutely awesome. It's amazing. And we raise a lot of money doing this, right? Like thousands. We've been doing it since twenty eleven, and by just a real quick, uh, over fifty thousand dollars have gone to CTSO uh, student organizations to directly benefit students. Okay. Uh, we do them usually. We've done them as many as four times in a year, one a year, two a year. We average two a year. Mm-hmm. And it's an awesome experience. The number one thing people need to know is you will not be tortured by sales staff locked in a room taking your keys. That's the hardest thing that parents have a preconceived notion about is, I don't want to go to this it's a car dealership. They're going to try to sell me a car. No one is selling you anything. You sh- It's like the Apple store. You show up, you, you experience the product, and you leave. If you want to come back and buy something, you want to talk to somebody, that's all your choice. Nobody's strong-arming anyone. Real, but there really is no obligation. You just I, show up I, the first year I did it, I said to the sales manager, okay, I'll do it. But if you if you torture people by trying to selling them, I'm going to give them your personal cell phone number, and I'm never coming back here. <laughs> and I've been we, – it's now 2019. I have zero complaints. They're true to their word. That's awesome. I'm going to that, by okay. the way. I've got that on my, uh, on my camera. He's got nine, nine to three. Nine okay. to three. A um, couple more orientations to tell you about. June 6th uh, is uh, – all campuses, uh, as well as STEM Academy and Culinary Arts Academy, all those orientations, and SIPIC and Aspen Pink, whatever program you're in, whatever building that is in, go to that building. That's your orientation night, 6 p.m. That is a no-brainer. If you're a new student or you have you know of somebody that has a student coming here for the first time next year, that is it, it, which you will learn so much. Shows you where your shop is. You get to meet your teacher. You get to see everything. It just takes those first day of school jitters. Very smart that we started that. Yeah. We did not do that 30 years ago, and I wish that we did when I was a kid here. Me too. I wish you did it too because I hear, I hear it's good things from back in that it's time. Good things. Like, I wish I had an orientation mm-hmm. that I've gone to. Um, yeah, get the lay of the land. Exactly. Uh, some graduations. So the uh, Cypex Center graduation um, and the Aspen Pink Center graduation, uh, June 13th, all happening here. Uh, at the oh, excuse me, Cypex Center is here at the Cypex campus. 
Ass and Pink Graduation, Kelsey Theater, Ooh. June thirteenth, both campuses. What time? Different locations. Um, check our website for the time. Uh, it's, I believe it's five p.m. for the Cypec, six for the Ass and Pink. Uh, okay, graduation. we'll ver- please, please verify. On the verify website. on the website. It's up there. Uh, STEM Academy graduation June eighteenth. Mm. Um, that is here at the Cypec. First graduating well. class. How exciting! The inaugural class of the STEM Academy. Love it. And uh, last but not least, Health Science Academy uh, senior class graduation, uh, also Kelsey Theater, but on June 18th. Um, that's about it for our announcements. Anything else you want to bring up, Mr. Nash? No, I'm just excited for this show. I know I, I know the guests. I can't wait to unpack it, unlock it, and rock and roll it. Yes, we got a great teacher tip coming up, a great featured guest, lots of exciting news. But right now it's time for our Student of the Week. And now it's time. Or student of the week. Well, 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 it's about time. We've been waiting to have the great Emily Frischella, mm-hmm. also known mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. Chip, uh, to be our student of the week all year. We've put it off for a while because uh, you helped me at the beginning of the year. You were uh, you were my interviewee when we were talking about a couple of our. Uh, uh, admissions procedures and programs and stuff like that. Welcome, Chip. Why, thank you. It's an honor to see where the magic truly happens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Mr. Nash, how about this? Uh, how about this young lady? Worked with thousands of kids in my career. Never worked with somebody like Emily Fischel. Yeah. Super dynamic, uh, passionate, could execute. Uh, I just give everybody a snapshot listening. A year ago, uh, she was uh, interning within the office. She's part of our business program. She'll tell you her story. And I do a networking event at the end of the year for all of our CIE students and business owners. And it, networking, it's it's awesome. She worked with me the whole night. And my wife and my girls are there at the event. And my wife goes, who's the girl from the college? Did you guys get a girl from Trenton State to be a college intern? Yeah, yeah. I said, no, that's Chip. That's the girl from the business program. So... Right there, you have people from the outside thinking that she's a college level or young adult level in her execution and in her ability. And that just resonates through your entire existence here at MCTS. And to me, you would be the new CTE student poster child. You're the types of students that we now have access and we're accessing. So I'm excited for everybody to listen to this because my tagline, it's not jean jackets and mullets anymore. And Chip Frischella proves that through this interview that we're going to do for Student of the Week. So um, tell us a little bit about what happened last night. Where, where were you last night? I was at the CDA award ceremony. And what is that, Chip? It's a scholarship fund. Wow. Okay. And and what does CDA stand for? Career Development Award? Yes. Yes. Okay, Correct. Good, that's fine. And so you received the a scholarship, a CDA scholarship. And then this happens at ETS. It happens every year. And it's kids from just our school, or are they kids from all over the county? No, it's from all over. It's students. I know a little bit about it. My Please. first year teaching, I, I had a uh, student from Graphic Arts, producer Nick's bobbing his head. Mike Wolverton and Brian Johnson uh, received it from my auto tech class. And it basically means that any guy or girl pursuing a CTE style of uh, post-secondary education they have revenue that will go support their tuition fees. So whether it's a community college program that has to do with an area of study that we offer here that segues into that, or trade school, or software engineering school, uh, very career-specific schooling. It just can't be, I'm going to go get a liberal arts degree at a four-year school. Yes. That scholarship will not work in this application. So speaking, I'm going to segue nicely. And so in addition to that scholarship, you also received the... uh, uh, the John Hobgood Memorial Award, I believe. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. That was and a big honor. That's very nice. And are you do you that's do you get some sort of a plaque or something like that? Or a uh is it just money or is it uh, a flag to wave on the back of your car? What happens there? <laughs> no, it was a nice big shiny certificate. It gave me a massive paper cut when our social worker, Whoa. Mr. Simic, handed Whoa. it to me. Sorry to hear that. Simic, you gotta tighten it up, buddy. <laughs> yeah, really. That's, uh, I guess, our graphic arts department didn't create those. Mm. We know that, never would have that would not have been an OSHA recordable <laughs> incident right there. <laughs> so now you can say you received, uh, in addition to uh, the CDA uh, financial award, in addition to this additional award. And this is going to further your future plans. So 
uh, share with everybody what's on the docket. I know you have two options. Uh, bring us through what you're... So we're going to get into what you originally started out and we're going to get, but since we're right here now, it's the end of the year, your senior year, what's your future looking like next year? Well, ideally, I would like to go into aviation in the rotary field, which is helicopters. Wow. I'd like to get into either search and rescue at a nice national park or maybe medevac, um, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. is when you're in like a car accident or something's wrong mm-hmm. and then the ambulances can't quite get to you or can't get to you in time, they send out a helicopter to come extract How you. cool is that? Very cool. It's amazing. Very cool. And then plan, if, if that doesn't, there's some things that are contingent on the aviation school and we've got a thriving aviation school locally to us that I know you've been in contact with. If for, it, there's some elements that are in waiting in regards to that, what's the default? What's the plan B? Then I would continue through. Well, I'm I, I have two internships currently. Okay. And I think I would go through to the community college mm-hmm. and try to enhance those skills. Awesome. So, part of the reason why we want to do, and that's a perfect thing to say, because part of the reason why we wanted to talk to you is. Uh, Obviously, you're a senior. You're in our business program. You started out at Criminalistics. But all this year, you were out on co-op. Co-op's been around forever. But co-op used to be like, uh, I'm in the culinary program, and I'm going to slice onions for a deli back in the 70s and the 80s. You know, I mean, seriously, that's what it used to be. When I was a kid here, it was very uh, elementary, and it wasn't as diverse and unique as some of the opportunities can be. And I want everybody to hear that you're the first person in the district's history to hold down two co-op positions in the same office building for two totally separate businesses with two totally different uh, business models. So that being said, that's pretty unique. So take us through the two businesses that you work for and just a a, a real quick snapshot of what you, the tasks that you performed at each one of those businesses. Okay. Um, My first internship was with, or still is, but... Mm -hmm. It started at Asenka Interactive. It's a digital marketing website development agency. Wow. Small company, five employees. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. I started as an administrative intern, Mm -hmm. but then more responsibility came on. Nice. And Well, they saw your skills. They started. (laughs) Well, you started unpacking them. They started a neat story, too, and I'm going to interject. I don't know if you know this or not. Uh, So uh, uh, Brian Hasenkamp, the owner of the company, uh, I ride mountain bikes with him, and he and I were talking, and he, I was talking about the program, and he's like, ah, oh, listen, I would love to do it, but I got a student who's a junior at Ryder College going into her senior year. She's coming in for an interview next week. I, I, we're definitely going to go with her. I talked to her on the phone, yada, yada, yada. Guess what? The junior from Ryder College pulled a no-show. No call, what? no show. And because of the conversation I had in regards to Emily Chip, who I knew was on deck for a co-op experience, he called me in september and said hey uh let's let's work together and let's try this out so you you springboarded off of somebody else's uh poor decision making (laughs) and you you activated yourself as a high school senior into a junior level college paid internship unbelievable and so from then what happened yeah and what's and let's hear the other job too after yeah that's what i mean so you're at sanka and then take us how you evolved to uh, Mr. Worf's point. How did you get into the other position? And what's the name of the other position? And what are you doing there? Wow. Okay. <laughs> so originally the one at Asenka Interactive was very administrative. So mm-hmm. I was doing a lot on that side of things. But then, you know, I slowly got integrated into the more website side of things and the mm-hmm. digital marketing. Mm-hmm. So I got into a lot of Google Analytics, SEO stuff, as well as I just started developing my sixth website what? yesterday. Oh my God. For real? Yep. That's awesome. So from that, take us to the, the other business owner and the other individual that's tapped into your resources. Yes. So it was actually a dual interview with this boss as well as another boss from a cloud-based IT model. It's mm-hmm. called Mainframe IT. They're both based in Princeton. Mm-hmm. Um, so Mainframe IT is still really small. It's a nice little um, startup mm-hmm. with uh, phenomenal technology. The technology is growing rapidly and mm-hmm. onboarding process is speeding up a lot. So, again, I started pretty administrative with him and then I kind of became his right-hand man. I was doing a lot of onboardings. <laughs> and That's awesome. Yeah, it was kind of, you tell me how to do it, I'll do it. So, so self-activation. Real And you thrive in that. I mean, uh, the neat story, and we're going to regress for a second, is 
So you came here your beginning of your junior year. Uh, you have a law enforcement background in your family. You thought that that was something that piqued your interest, and you found yourself that you weren't really uh, dialed in. So take us through how you evolved from criminalistics to our business and now to our co-op. Yeah. So, you know, they give you those online tests at mm-hmm. the home school, and I always had an interest in criminalistics or criminal justice. Uh, I was told since the age I could talk that I would be a great lawyer. Very, mm. I like to say how I feel, and if I don't feel that way, I'll still argue it. Mm-hmm. No problem. Do you healthy? Yeah, Health, yeah devil's healthy. advocate. I love it. Enjoy it. Um, and so. Eventually, I was introduced to the career of forensic psychology. Mm -hmm. I liked psychology. I liked understanding people, and I liked criminals. So I was like, why not get to know criminals, understand them? No brainer. You got to know your enemy to defeat it. (laughs) (laughs) Wise beyond your years. Wise beyond your years. I love it. And so I also, I didn't enjoy school. Okay. And so homeschool was a game that you played. Definitely. How to get through it. How to get through it with least path of least resistance. And here's the great part is if you're a student or a parent of a student listening, you know, that that's we hear that frequently here. And then how was it when you were here in terms of when you started the program and then how you segued? It's definitely different. Um, it was a very unconventional learning environment. I was not expecting it at all, but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I did really enjoy it. Mm-hmm. So I was hanging out in criminalistics, taking that program, and eventually I was like, man, this is awful. I like the TV shows, but I hate the classes. Okay, and and here's not for me. And that's a victory. See, if you're if you're a son or daughter listening or a parent listening, sometimes your son or daughter wants to try something out, and it's like a pair of shoes. Yeah. It, it doesn't work. And I love what you said, man. This isn't for me. I thought it was going to be like this, but it's not that. That's, that's a victory. And that's not a knock on our criminalistics. Program. No, that, that's no. just not a good fit for you. We, you know, we opened up another section of it. We got two classes of that running. Absolutely, year. absolutely. But it just wasn't for you. And then you found something else that was right. Correct, because I did really like the learning environment, and I liked the school environment, and I mm-hmm. saw everyone else how passionate they were about their shops. I was like, I want that. Okay, that's awesome. Great. Uh, as a matter of fact, also, um, and we 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 do have to let Chip get back to uh, mm-hmm. get back to class, um, but. Uh, You've also helped us so much with different events. She hosted the CTE luncheon. Skills USA when I had the Skills USA Skills competitions USA. here. Unreal. Anytime we have a dignitary visiting or something like Absolutely. that, we just say, yeah, just have Chip take him around, give him a tour. Student, you've like done that. you've done tours with with guidance counselors with you, but you've taken tours out when Mr. Simic or myself. I mean, I'm with another employer at a, at a meeting, and Mr. Simic is tied up in a situation, and you've managed that for us, yeah. not because. You, you know, we just pick anybody on campus, but because of your ability to execute. So, Chip, any uh, any parting words, any final thoughts about your time here going forward? What do you think? Oh, so many. But <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I mean, I'd like to give a shout out to technical school. I recommend that if mm. you have the slightest bit of interest, make sure you come go mm. for check out a shop. You'll either love it or hate it within mm-hmm. five minutes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there's no harm in doing that. Yep. But, I mean, the whole technical school has really helped me out. I've met a lot of amazing people who have definitely shaped me and pushed me in ways I didn't want to be pushed, but in ways that will definitely help me out. <laughs> and I'm excited to see where it takes me. We are, too. Please please come back and see us. We are really, really Yeah, you're, really you're, you. Listen, we're doing a follow-up of this in a couple of years. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Emily, well, we're getting a little dusty in here. Emily <laughs> Chip Frischella, student of the week, student of our hearts. Wow. Thank you. Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. Absolute MCTS Hall, Hall of, of Fame, Fame, hands down. Come back and see us soon. Hi, this is Marquise Moore from Auto Collision Class, and you're listening to the MCTS Experience. Knowledge is power. It's time for Ask MCTS. Ask MCTS. Mr. Nash, our, uh, our que- I've actually gotten this question a couple times from mm-hmm. parents, uh, mm-hmm. phone calls and emails. The question is, um, what do we need to do to prepare for next year? What does my kiddo need love to do it. to get ready? Love fire, it. Fire away, sir. I love it when you try to stump me, but here's the reality. It's not about stumping me. I'm joking around when I say that. First and foremost, if your son and daughter's coming here next year, they need to work this summer. Get them prepared for work, for getting their yeah, hands the, dirty. All right, that just stuff. knowing how to manage their time, show up, produce. That's the first and foremost. If you're coming here, not because that we're a work factory, but the lessons that we teach and the theory that we teach is going to help them so much more 
if they've gone out into the world and earned for themselves. Then I they're going to see the value of who we are. Also, as a, I'll put on my school psychologist hat a little yes. bit for a second. Yes. When you work, right? When you're mm. whether it's getting paid or you just have a certain level of responsibility, mm. little flips, little switches get flipped in your executive function that really? you maybe haven't used much before. Really? It's about thinking for yourself and and what you said before, planning, organization, time management, time management, all those things you start to you start to get better about it. There's a direct relationship with that exact uh, component. And I didn't know the brain mechanics, and I'm glad you shared that. The success rate for a student that has physically worked a retail job, grocery store, Panera, Wawa, et cetera, and then they come to MCTS or a conventional high school program that they fall in love with, their success rate is significantly higher. Okay. So that's the first thing. All right. Hey, let's get them working this summer. Let's get them working. That's number a good one thing. work. What's number two? Number two, you're going to receive a letter from us in the district probably mid to late August you know, reminding, hey, your son or daughter's in this program, and it, there may be a uniform. Each instructor crafts a letter of themselves. I used to do it when I taught auto shop, and I would share things. Hey, this is where you can buy your uniform. Each program has a uniform that they put on because it prepares the mind of the individual. The reason we wear a uniform is because it puts everybody in the right state of mind. It's the same reason why the Army has a uniform. Mm -hmm. It's the same reason why companies have shirts that they give out to people that they want them. It puts them in the right frame of mind. You're here to do a job. You put you're, a uniform. you're here to learn. You're here to absorb. You're here to activate. So you're going to receive a letter. Aside from those two things, in other words, the letter will spell it out. I would definitely get the uniform early rather than later. Your son or daughter does not need to show up on the first day of school with the uniform on. By the second or the third day, they're going to be issued a locker, and then they can bring everything in, and they can get set, right and set it, ready to go. Okay. So, uh, I would just say, hey, I, I, an open idea. Um, maybe do a little HowStuffWorks.com, which is a great website if you're going to a, a specific class. And you HowStuffWorks.com? Can, HowStuffWorks.com is an invaluable tool for anything, for anybody that wants to learn. But if you're coming to study a particular area, of well, uh, whether it be masonry, carpentry, uh, auto collision, you could look up things on how it works and mm -hmm. how to do that. And that could definitely get your head unlocked as well. So working in a simple retail job or summer job, keeping an eye out for the summer letter and buying that uniform sooner rather than later once the letter articulates what the uniform needs to be. And then anything that piques your interest in the subject matter, have your son or daughter go to HowStuffWorks.com, and they can poke around and look at it. It's a phenomenal website. Mr. Nash, once again, a perfect answer. You're impossible to stump. I tr I, I'm thankful and appreciative of the knowledge that MCTS has bestowed upon me, and I challenge anyone to stump me. Impossible. We'll be right back after this. We don't stop learning after the bell rings. Guess what? It's time for teacher tips. Welcome back, everybody. Our teacher tip this week comes to us from the great Mr. Birdsall, our horticulture and turf care management teacher. Take it away, Mr. B. Hey, guys, just want to let you know, anybody who's out there doing any commercial mowing, right behind me on this rider, I have a system. It's called a rope system. It's a rollover protection system. Right now, we're actually cutting at Mercer County Technical School, and the degree of the angle on the lawn that we're cutting is a little bit greater than a 20% grade. So you always want to make sure whenever you're riding on your rider and you have a slight slope, make sure you got your seatbelt on and make sure your ropes, your rollover protection system is up. Just in case the machine ever flips over, you will remain on the machine and be nice and safe. Happy mowing and stay safe. Happy birthday, by the way, Mr. Birdsall, and thank you for your teacher tip. Hey, you, come here. Come here. Check it out. They're in our school. They're in our community. They're around the corner. Welcome, our featured guest. Welcome back, everybody. We have a very, very special special featured guest today. And it's not just a guest. Put an S at the end of that. Oh. Featured guests. We are proud to welcome um, our evening school's principal, mm -hmm. Gary Mattia, as well as the uh, evening school coordinator, the adult school coordinator, Bill Donovan. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Great to be thank here. Thank you. Good to be here. Um, so end of the year, end of the school year, the mm -hmm. high school kids are wrapping things up. And obviously, you see your kids going off to college. You see kids going right into the workforce. Military. Military. A lot, lot of options out there. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but another, another really, really good option for students, um, and not just as a consolation prize, not just for the kid who said, ah, I, I didn't get into the school I wanted to, or I'm going to take a gap year, or, I don't know what I want to do with my life. But a very, very viable option is, is going 
uh, to a technical school, an adult evening school. You can work in the day, mm -hmm. go get some real training at night. Um, I'd love to, to learn a little bit more about this, and I'm sure our listeners would as well. Well, most of our training in the evening program, uh, it's for adults, and it's for students who are going into apprenticeship programs, whether it be plumbing, electrical, HVAC, which is heating, venting, air conditioning. Uh, we have cosmetology programs, uh, maintenance mechanic programs. Like a Black Seal, somebody uh, that wants to get a Black Seal license. Black we have, Seal program. We have small classes like Black Seal. We, we just do the <coughs> preparation for the test. Okay. We, we don't do any of the state testing. Sure, But sure. we guide them to where the test is and how to sign up for it. Similar to like an automotive. I know you have that similar with automotive technology. If you want to take ASEs, which is the certification for automotive, that was my background. I know you guys offered that as well, meaning an in-depth theory where you can brush up on an automotive test or like you're saying about the black seal. I'm connecting those two right. concepts. Okay. Right. And when we have an apprentice, mm -hmm. uh, part of the time for that apprentice is spent on the job. So they get on the job hours, and then part of that time is spent in the classroom. And those classroom hours happen at ASAPIC or uh, SIPEC. Okay, great. Yeah. And a, an apprentice program uh, is where a uh, person would work during the day and go to school in the evening uh, to learn his trade, the theory behind it. So, And, and when you say work during the day, Bill, I'm going to clarify, it's in the specific trade, the art of that ability, whether it be masonry, HVAC, plumbing, electrical, things along those lines. Electrical isn't held on campus, that's or it is. I don't know. Yes, electrical is held on campus. We, okay. we do electrical, plumbing, HVAC, again, maintenance mechanic, mm -hmm. um, those areas. And uh, we have welding classes. Oh, Weld my gosh. Welding is also part, usually part of one of the other programs, but it can be an apprentice program unto itself. Do you itself. guys have blueprint reading and things of that nature? Blueprint reading, we offer math. Uh, the math programs run at SIPEC. Oh, wow. We have Blueprint Reading 1 and 2, Math 1 and 2. Oh, wow. So uh, we're, we're having some great courses that, the, uh, that we're offering. Uh, we are developing a partnership now with Princeton Plasma. Oh, wow. So uh, we just got off the phone speaking with them. We sent in three courses that were uh, approved by the Department of Labor, and we're going to be seeing some students uh, from Princeton Plasma, enter our adult school at Assapick. And that well. correlates right with Mick. Mick, you're having Princeton Plasma yeah, physics. Yeah, they're, they're coming. Actually, uh, uh, if, if depending on when this airs, um, they're going to be at SIPEC Center Friday, May 31st at noon. Okay. Um, uh, Ms. Greco is coming from Princeton Plasma physics. And uh, Assam Pink. It, so this is now Pink Monday, June 3rd. At and that's, noon. that's for graduating high school students that might be in our STEM Academy, yes. might be in our HVAC, might be in our carpentry or building maintenance trades. But these guys, I think to really clarify, you guys are primarily engineered to handle people that are out of high school, that 18 to 24, Correct. sometimes older. I'm not saying yes. everybody's that. Yes. but it could be a career changer. It could be a career changer. Somebody that, you know, hey, I, I went to school and studied business, and if I get on that train one more day, I can't take it. I want to open up my own uh, electrical, mm -hmm. masonry, et cetera. Plumbing, air conditioning. Plumbing. And you've got to get a Department of Labor apprenticeship paperwork certified. And that's the reality of, of what you guys offer. In other words, there's sometimes in, in legislation or sometimes in bids or, or in the private sector, people say you need to be a, a, a paper uh, obtaining and owning apprentice, graduate apprentice. And Correct. that's the programs that you guys offer. Yeah. Yes, we often have one of three types of students. We have the apprentice who is already working for an employer. Okay, they have uh, signed up with through their employer with the federal government as an apprentice. Oh wow! So they're required to do in some of the major trades like plumbing, electrical, HVAC. They're required to do eight thousand hours on a job, which takes four years. Okay, they have to complete five hundred and seventy-six hours of related training within the classroom. Got it. And that's with us. And usually it's two nights a week. Uh, we have fall and spring semesters, okay, and uh, so they have to complete again 576 hours. Once they complete their 8,000 hours on a job, and their 576 in the related training, they get their apprenticeship papers, mm -hmm. and the apprenticeship papers is is like a diploma. Mm -hmm. And what happens is they are now entitled. They are a registered apprentice. They're now a journeyman. Oh wow! One, once they complete, but they're now registered across the whole country. Oh, wow. So if they wanted to work in California. Seattle, or, right, or Seattle, right, where the jobs are right now, if they're an electrician and they go out to Seattle and they go for an interview for a job and the employer says, where did you get your training? They have a federal apprenticeship training because the, fed, the feds have approved the training all across the whole country as pretty much standard. 
And and the neat part about that is, think about it. When I'm hearing this as a teacher, as a per, I, I teach oh shit to those kids. Our people are a natural resource in our country. So if we can verify the training in Central New Jersey is it similar or exact to what's received in Texas correct. or Minnesota, yes, correct. that's the standardizing. Yes. As similar would be a med student that's graduating with a, a degree in, in med school. So yes, it's the same exact thing, and hence the term uh, journeyman, right? Absolutely, that yes. must be where it comes from. Yeah, they serve four years as an apprentice, one, one year, year as a journeyman, and in New Jersey, once they complete their journeyman status, they're allowed to take a test to get their license. Oh wow! In the major trades of electrical, plumbing, HVAC, and at that point, uh, once they have their license, they can now put their name on the side of a truck, they sure. can and, start their and, own and, business and run their own business. To. But that's if they want to. Many students don't get their own license. They just continue to work. Sure. You know, the because they're gone. They're with. Uh, we also get the student who is not sure what they want to do. And then they may spend a year in electrical. They may spend another year in plumbing. Or they may move on mm-hmm. into <laughs> something else. But uh, And we get the student who comes from college. Mm-hmm. They're maybe 20, 21 take, years take old. Take me through that student. Take me. I, I want our listeners to hear that. So maybe it resonates and connect. With a family member, a friend, somebody in the neighborhood, what what does that scenario look like that you've seen repetitively occur? Uh, and it is very, it, it's very often. We have okay. a student come in, 20, 21, 22 years old. Uh, they've been to college. It's not what they want. It's not what they're looking for. They can't find a job in the area. And mm-hmm. they come back, and through their friends, they've either found a job in plumbing or electrical, or they want to get into the trade, and mm-hmm. they start working. And what's nice about it is... Um, they get their training, they get their license, and they move on. Sure. But uh, very often, it's it's college isn't what they wanted. Mm-hmm. And they come back, and they do get the hands-on, and they realize, you wow, know, hey. I love this. I'm passionate about it. This I'm is pretty good. Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. We, but we also get the student who, you know, finishes the four-year apprenticeship, and then they go to college. Uh, writings, uh, I can and the tell colleges, you right. <laughs> the colleges scoff them up because of the hands-on and the training they've had. I, I call that blue yeah. collar, white collar, it, it, light blue collar. Yeah. If, if once you're light blue collar, you're unstoppable. They can do it all. Oh, because you know, first of all, you can execute. Plus, you can it through conversely, or just by walking onto a job site or a project or look a set of prints. You can say to somebody, "This isn't going to work." Oh my gosh, this is brilliant. I've seen people do this exact what Bill Donovan just described. And they are, they're the moguls. They're the guys that are the Charbels and the people that, you know, Enzo Nini, Nini Construction, Sebastiano Nini. Sure. Went to school, University of Delaware, got an architecture degree, came back, got it, worked in an apprenticeship program, and he's running job sites, commercial, residential, uh, industry, you name it. Just from a nuts and bolts standpoint, too, in numbers, you compare this to college, you're going to spend four years, but you're mm-hmm. going to spend a couple hundred thousand dollars yes. at a yes. job like this. You're making money the whole time you're learning. What yes. does this cost the students? Yes. Tell, tell, the, tell the listeners. What does it cost? If them? they're sponsored by the company, it will cost the students absolutely nothing. <laughs> the company would pay for the education. Bill and I go out to all the high schools uh, and visit to talk about our programs, and we give the kids a, an alternative uh, to going to college. And, you know, as, as Mick said, that $200,000 mark is what we always use. Do you want a $200,000 college debt to start out with, or you like to get involved in a program where you instantly make money working for a company and become an apprentice. And in four years, as Bill said, you're journeyman. And if mm-hmm. you want to go to college after, you know, so be it. And co- like you said, the, the application, the acceptance rate for an individual who's been out immersed in a career life, adult world, executing and performing and producing is a viable you know, probably a number one ding, 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 number one candidate for oh, any well, election. I would think so. Right, Absolutely. right. And and if you get into the programs right out of high school, uh, you have completed your apprenticeship by the time you're 22, yes. wow. 23 Phenomenal. years old. So college is not out of the bounds and, at that point at all. No. no. And, Every, you ha- and you have a trade under your... Yeah. And everybody's beating that drum now. Mike Rowe, we need more trades. Yeah. All our all our, our leaders, our, our educational leaders, our national leaders, we yeah. need more people the, in the, the trades. It's a very viable way to do it. It's... It, it, it's funny you say that. 20 years ago, the pendulum was swinging the other direction. Dot com, boom, blah, blah, blah. And, and I'm not saying blah, blah, blah to dismiss that. That's the way the pendulum was swinging. Now it's coming back the other way. And, and, we, the, and we, the, we, st- the state government oh, and, yeah. are, have now uh, offered some uh, grants uh, to the companies that are sponsoring uh, students to come to our programs. And there's some money to be had. And there's a big push now uh, to, you know, uh, push the programs that we're doing with the apprenticeships 
Wow. You know, and they're, they're wow. becoming even more popular. Wow. We, we are getting more and more calls, especially this year, because of the uh, companies are calling us. They, they want to hire people. They're offering decent salaries to start. They're offering pensions and health care, and they can't find people to work. Ah, that's a great problem to have. We're here to help. They're, they're <laughs> offering to pay for the training, give them jobs. One company, I'm not going to name them, but uh, they were offering 15 to $17 to start. They weren't getting anybody from maintenance mechanics, and now they're offering twenty-six dollars to start. To start, to start, and, the and, they're, and they're willing to pay for the training. So here's a student that can start if they're interested in an area like that to start at twenty-six, twenty-seven dollars an hour, get their training paid, and work as an apprentice for four years, and come out. And at that point, you can you can write your ticket. Wow. The, the machine idea. shop area is just an unbelievable today. Oh, yeah. If you're a machinist or you have that you kind know, of mindset, it's, it's I think the average age was, what, 62 or 65? Yeah. They but cannot you, find machinists. That's a great That's a great note to go out on, just just uh, hearing about that need and the, and the amount of money and opportunity available. Check out the website, uh, mcts.edu. There's a drop-down for the adult school. Check that out. Is there a phone number you guys can toss out for the school uh, Yeah, uh, area code 609-586-586. Five one four six. Perfect. You can call during the day, or just leave a message. We'll get back to you. If they wanted to stop in and see you, Bill, uh, when school is in session as it winds down, or Gary, by all means, what, what's a good time for people to come in? To- well, we're, we're here all day. Got it. Uh, myself and the secretary, they can stop anytime during the day when we have Got a it. registration. You know, we're open, and then that uh, night school. Of course, Bill's there. Uh, 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 at night, uh, and we're kind of winding down the night school now. Yeah, our last night will be June 12th, so you can stop in up until June 12th. Okay. Uh, registration for the following year opens up on July 15th. All right. And, again, we have fall and spring semesters, nothing in the summer. Uh, our website, go to the uh, MCTS. mccts.edu. Right. And all our programs are listed on there. To Perfect. me, it's and, if, if if you're if you're getting out of high school or you're out of high school or you know family or friends that are, you know, fl- not floundering but just not sure of a career trajectory. To me, this is a no brainer. Oh, you wish I wish I wish I did it. I and it, I did it. and again, Likewise. just put one plug in for the website. We have a job. We have a job oh, site yeah. on the website that if you're looking for a position, uh, we're encouraging companies to put their put their job offerings on the website. Yes. Okay, and so again, registration opens July fifteenth. But anybody can call. We'll meet with. Uh, we don't usually meet with parents of students over eighteen, but at the beginning of the program, you know, please, we're welcoming in parents and students to sit and we'll outline any program for you the whole four years. Awesome, right. uh, Gary Matia, Bill Donovan, thank you so much for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. Your featured guests. Thanks thank for you having very us. much. Outstanding featured guest, outstanding episode this Absolutely. week. I'd like to thank everybody over there at the uh, Adult Evening School for hanging with us. Um, also, a big thanks to Ed Birdsall, our horticulture and turf care management teacher for the teacher tip, um, and the legendary Emily Chip for Shella. Uh, Mr. Nash, give me, some, give me some wrapping up final thoughts. What do you think? Well, it's been a super fun, exciting year, as always, at MCTS, but the addition of our podcast and a way to connect with uh, our listeners and parents and family and network with businesses and bring us all together in a different way is just something we're super excited to build upon. Really, really nice. Very nice. Thank you. Hey, this has been great. Um, we have one more episode coming up this year, so stay tuned for our, for our June episode, and we're going to toss a couple mini episodes in there. Reminder to check out our camps, the middle school summer camps that are happening here at SIPEC. Um, sign up online on our website, mcts.edu. And we have one of our super Drive One for Your School events on June 8th at Haldeman Ford East Windsor, 9 to 3. And this is very, very, very important. All you need to do is show up, be an 18-year-old licensed driver, and that's it. You test drive a vehicle, no one badgers you, and the school receives a $20 donation from Ford Motor Company. You don't need to pay. It doesn't cost anything. There seems to be some confusion in the outside world of this. This is the no-brainer fundraiser, as we like to call it. You go test drive a car, we get 20 bucks. Done. D- 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 no, one, no strings attached. Nope. D- nobody takes your keys. They don't put you in the back room, watch, make you watch the timeshare video. There's none of that. <laughs> you show up, and in less than 10, 15 minutes, and driving a car around the block, you've made Mercer County Technical Schools CTSO funds $20. God bless America. <laughs> Um, reminder, please uh, follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. 
Um, check out our social media page. We got a Pinterest page too. Pinterest um, producer Nick our, ramping up his Pinterest game. Yes, he's making uh, God's eyes and uh, <laughs> crepe paper mache things. He is too. Lovely he's funny. There. He's multi. He's multifaceted. <laughs> he's multifaceted. We got our own YouTube channel. Please watch our fun videos out there, and uh, you can of course share this podcast with a friend. Listen on Spotify, Google Play, iTunes, or check out everything on our website uh, www.mcts.edu. This is Mr. Orff, along with producer MacGyver Nick and the great Dave Nash, reminding you to discover your passion and unlock your future.